Hello gamers, we are officially back for the new patch. I think people wanted me to do a playthrough for the last new patch, and then I didn't do that. I've been gone, but I'm here for the next patch that I'm now going to do. And it's not just going to be a regular playthrough, it's not just going to be an iron mode playthrough, but I'm going to be doing the spacer start, just for that little bit of extra... not really a challenge. It's not a challenge, because it's not hard. It's just a little tedious. But then again, grinding out credits and levels is always going to be tedious. So, you know, giving yourself that little bit of extra stuff you got to do at the start, that just gives you extra game to play, really, when you think about it. So that's what I'm going to do. This is vanilla, by the way. This is this is a, an option available in vanilla. You just have to enable it through the settings. It's kind of hidden a little bit because... Well, if you're not experienced enough to find it in the settings, then I guess you're just not experienced enough to use this option. I guess that's the logic. That's probably the logic they're going for there. But we're going to go with that. Now, I do have one mod installed, which is the Captain's Log. Because, as the name suggests, it lets you keep track of things, which is going to be really useful. If we find, like, a hyper shunt or one of the abandoned colony ships... It's so nice to just have that logged automatically instead of trying to write it down on a, in your phone or something. It's just a nice quality of life improvement. But other than that, this is vanilla. And since we're starting like this, I think bulk transport's a pretty good choice. Because we're going to be starting, you'll see, it's not a good start. It's, some might call it the worst start. It, it, it's bad. It's, it's the opposite of good. It's ungood, some might even say. We're going to need that cargo space and that fuel space. Trust me. So, right off the bat, here's what we got. We got two crew members. I assume these are just like our buddies who joined us on this stupid mission in a rusty kite. This is like a, like a specific version of the kite. Pre-collapse, I think, because it has no weapons. It's got two D-mods. We've got those two crew members. I mean, yeah, 2,000 credits. And to make matters worse, if we go over to our income in the command tab, now, you can't see it right now, but pretty soon we're going to start having to pay debt. Yeah, forget the Glacia Academy stipend. Instead, you have a debt. It starts out as 1,000 credits a month, but over time it ramps up. I don't know when it ends, because I've done the spacer start for about two years at most. And after the second year, it's up at like 13,000 credits. So, you know, two years in, that's not too bad. But I don't know when it ends. I assume it ends sometime. And the description says that you don't like to talk about it. So I assume it's something embarrassing, like child support. You probably, uh, Mr. Paul Bingus over here probably abandoned his kids to go be a spaceman. And, you know, that's pretty irresponsible. That is pretty irresponsible. But to be fair... He does at least pay his child support. That's more than my dad was willing to do. So, another advantage of actually starting with bulk transport is you actually start with full fuel. So normally you would only start with 15 units of full, but if fuel, but if you pick bulk transport as your starting skill, you get that extra seven fuel, which is really cool. It's really, I mean, it's not that useful, but it's a little useful. So we're gonna go over here and we're gonna do exactly what everybody does at the start of the game if they want to make credits because we need to make some credits and fast we're sitting on 2,000 credits and we're in debt if we wait we're gonna run out of money we're gonna be in trouble all right so these are being sold higher you want to look at these two heavy armaments recreational drugs I guess you could look at organs too uh, but I like these ones because they're funnier so Right, and the important thing is that these are high density in terms of value. Like, you wouldn't want to trade something like metal because it would fill up your cargo hold before spending all your credits. These things, you can spend all your credits on these things and you're not even going to fill up the cargo space that you do have, as limited as it is. So you want to favor these things in terms of trades. And the market data just tells you what to do. It's as simple as that. If we want to buy some... Uh, it looks like Captain Starworks. Captain. Over in Asira. That's eight light years away. 
Good thing we have a little bit of extra fuel, because... What's our fuel range? Yeah, not much. That little bit of extra fuel is actually going to help out here. And here you can create log entries, but there are also stuff that it uh, that this mod logs automatically. I'll put a dis I'll put a link down in like a pinned comment or something for this one. So, start of the game. I'm going to grab anything that's a survey, well, not a survey mission because uh, we don't have the crew su have machinery supplies. We ain't got any any of that. But what we do have is the ability to go places. And as it turns out, that's really all you need. As long as you can go there, you can do this mission. You just got to scan the thing. So we're going to grab all of those. Even if we're not going to do all of them, we're in fact, we're probably going to miss a few of them if we grab all of them. But that's okay. Because the reputation hit for failing is one. It's one point. One point on a range of negative 100 to a positive 100. It's one point. It, it actually does not matter. Actually, wow, hold on. We start with a 15 with the hegemony. You can just get a... You know, normally I aim for a Tritachion commission because I like high-tech ships. But if you're doing the Spacer Star, you could just grab the hegemony commission right off the bat and get the free money. Yeah, you sometimes, you know, Tritachion will shoot at you. And that's kind of sad. But free money is free money. So, I think we could just avoid their space if it comes down to it. Although, that would probably make things a little too easy. Getting that free cash inflow right off the bat. So, I think I'll wait until I can get Tritachion Commission, just to make it a little extra challenging. Yeah, now, I'm kind of fuddling around here, but... Actually, what we should do first is go over to this abandoned terraforming platform. There's a cool story behind this. See, uh, you know, this is a place that you can use to store cargo for free. Instead of using the storage at planets, you can also store ships. And what's cool is that there's this Hermes here that you can just take right away for free. And the reason that they added that is a really cool story. You see, when they drew the art for it, uh, the artist just put in the shuttle and then they were like why don't we make that in the game and then they did that i know it's a fascinating story it's you know the the character development involved is just you know i think i think it's just it really speaks a lot about society it's it's really deep let's see degraded engines not a huge fan of that but on the flip side kind of doesn't matter because bulk transport gives that plus two to civilian ships. So we're, we're still going to be in the positive. Plus, this thing is just better than the kite. I mean, I could scrap this kite right now, and I, I will. Yeah, because it... I mean, do I want to do that? That's what I did last time. Because I, I, the first few times I've tried the Spacer Star, I didn't know about the Hermes. So I was just doing it with the kite, which is very doable. And then I've tried it once, grabbing the Hermes and immediately scrapping the, sky, the kite. I guess I could just keep it. Yeah. The fact that crew is under strength kind of doesn't matter. It's not like we're going into combat, so having reduced effective combat readiness really does not matter. And I mean... I'm really just going to go buy two crew anyways. That's pretty cheap. That's pretty easy. We can just do that. Yeah. No need to make a big deal out of it. We'll go up to five. And then we'll start our illicit drug trade. Yeah, look. Contus Den is selling them 86 a pop. Let's go. It's surprisingly safe around Contus Den, too. You would expect a lot of pirate worlds have pirates just swarming around them who will mercilessly attack you even if it's clearly not worth it. I mean you've got nothing and they still come after you even if their fleet is much bigger than yours. It's a little silly. I wonder I don't think there's a threshold. Yeah. I'll turn that on for now. I really don't think there's a threshold where they stop coming after you. Alright, well here's something that's a little interesting. I'm going to scan here. 
and you'll see it pop up hyperspace topography you get five for scanning a gas giant and this one has a magnetic field so you also get five for that which is a little weird that you get that even in the core worlds i wouldn't have expected that i would expect that you would only get them in like new systems but even in the core worlds you can go past a gas giant and scan it so that's just a little way to get that little bit of extra hyperspace topography instead of crying because you're just shy of hyperfield optimization sitting at like 540 and then you're thinking that you need to go out and scan something no if you're that close just scan a couple gas giants in the core worlds you might notice there's also a few extra things here uh, you've still got the classic slipstream you know fuel efficiency which got buffed 75 percent instead of 50 percent reduced fuel slipstream detection same as ever but now we've got reverse polarity which lets you reverse the direction of a slipstream. This is really good. This was a, a fantastic idea. You know, they already have hyperspace typography in the game, so that's a perfect way to add in new abilities you can unlock. And this just makes navigation so much more fluid, so much more fun. Slipstreams are no longer an obstacle 70% of the time. Now they're actually useful 90% of the time once you get this. It's great. Hyperfield optimization, that's as good as ever. And then generate slip surge. This has a lot of meme potential. As a matter of fact, I've been told that this not only applies to your fleet, but it applies to other fleets as well. So if you pop up, because you, you kind of like place it next to a gravity well. So you, if you time it correctly, you can use it to fire off other fleets in a random direction. So maybe you're in trouble, maybe you've got some pirate fleets that you can't escape from because they interdicted you and you can't emergency burn? <laughs> well, my friend, that's no longer an issue. Just get close to a gravity well and pop up the slip surge. And well, I guess normally you would just shoot yourself away, but you could also shoot them away instead, which is a lot funnier. And that, I mean, why else are you playing a video game if not to have fun? Also, there's the Orion Perseus Abyss. Hyperspace, when you get beyond the borders of the normal sector and you get into abyssal hyperspace, which is in any direction now, it's not just in this region, in any direction, it turns into abyssal hyperspace, which you'll see is very spooky. It's very dark. It's very quiet and very slow. In terms of danger, it's not really that dangerous. You know, just don't run out of supplies, fool. But it does, you have to understand, you need a lot of supplies because traveling takes four times as long. So this doesn't look very far from here to here, but it's the distance you gotta travel is, well, I mean, I say distance. I mean, you, you just get slowed down a lot and your sensor range is vastly reduced. So traveling through here takes a lot longer which means that you're going to burn through more supplies. That's what it's all about. And there's this little system in here. This has some interesting stuff. This has some very interesting stuff. And on an unrelated note, you can also set up wormholes. That's a to it's totally unrelated to this system. This system has nothing to do with wormholes because that would be a spoiler, and I would be spoiling that for you. So when I'm mentioning these different things, it, it, totally unrelated. There's also a lot of skill changes. I mean, I should probably play the game. I'll talk about each of these things as we go. But I like a lot of the skill changes. I like a lot of the new content. The one thing I have not really experienced, well, I say the one thing, there's probably a few. Why do I have my, no, turn that off. Okay, now we can do this. All right, give me drugs. Just hook me up. A lot of the new content uh, I have not experienced because most of the new content Okay, this is getting annoying. Yeah, that's too much, obviously. Most of the new content is in the form of Colony Crisis, which is kind of a rebranding of the old hostile activity. And I have not done too much with colonies so far. But each faction, it's not just the pirates and the pathers anymore. Every faction has their own unique event with like multiple branching options for how to resolve the conflict. And what I really like about what they've done with it is that once you resolve a conflict, it's over. 
it's over. They don't just keep coming. It's done. So, for example, the hegemony, one of their events is the AI inspection. Well, once you, once you resolve the AI inspection, it's done. It's, they, don't, they don't just send them forever. If you kick their, you just blast their fleet out of the, out of the sky, they don't send more. So you can actually make progress. And the events are actually meaningful because it's not just this recycled thing that gets done over and over. It's a one-time event. So how you handle it matters. I think, that's, I think that's a really good decision. And it's not like there's a lack of content because, again, most of the effort in this patch was put into that. That's where most of the effort is. So there's a lot of, like, each faction has their own unique thing. It's going to be great. I mean, it's probably going to suck because they're going to send a lot of stuff at you. But figuring, but resolving it's going to be great. That I guarantee. I'm considering putting... No, I'll put fuel tanks on when I get there. There's no need to do it right now. All right, I didn't even... Where am I selling these? Only 281? At the highest? Eh, eh, hmm. Honestly, I'd rather go to Epiphany. It's going to be paying a little less, but it's closer. All right, Epiphany. There you are. Although that being said, I'm probably going to get harassed by Pathers. I mean, I just don't get caught. It's as simple as that. All right, right, right. I need to grab these. Doesn't matter if I am not sure I can make those. What you want to do is just keep grabbing them, because if they end up getting clustered in the same area then you can go in that direction and grab all of them instead of just grabbing one and then not grabbing, you know. I'm sure you know. All right, and as I mentioned earlier, yeah, I'm probably not going to get the other one that's going in the other direction. But the penalty is one reputation. So even if this was an important faction like Tritachion, who I want to get a key mission with, that one is not so bad. Oh, hello. Okay, that was... I really should have just clicked emergency burn there, but instead I clicked go dark because I was thinking... I was going into the asteroid belt and I did not react in time. Because I was, I was thinking a little bit ahead. Well, this is not great. I, I think most people would describe this as a bad situation. So we're just going to disengage and luckily uh, there seems to be a little safety feature built into the game where if your fleet is literally nothing they just harass you instead of you know killing you because they could they could kill you but they oh are you kidding me i bumped into an asteroid which increased my that's like the one time an asteroid increasing my sensor profile has ever mattered that's the one time I can't believe this. This is not going well. This could be going a lot better. They, they, they seem to know where I am anyways. Yeah, yeah. Fire off your pulse. That's fine. I'm wasting time here, too. This is taking several days. Do you guys know how much money you're costing me? You are cutting into... You, sir, are cutting into my bottom line. You know, I don't really... You know, words like bottom line, I don't really know what those mean, but I figure if I start talking like that, then that'll just automatically boost my score with Tritachion. You know, uh... You know, the only corporate speak I can really think of is bottom line, to be quite honest. But if I'm sure... But they use it a lot, so I figure it's really important to get that one down. Oh, that's another one. I just thought of another one. Acquisitions. Yeah. I'm going to li liquidate our acquisitions in order to increase the bottom line. Yeah. I mean, I can feel my reputation going up already. All right, let's sell this crap. Yeah. We turned 2,000 credits into 7,000 credits. That's a good start. You know, we burned through a decent amount of fuel. Had to emergency burn. That wasn't fun. Uh, let's do it again. Let's get up to... 
Let's get up to like 15,000 credits from this. Maybe more. You know, we just got to get enough that we can buy some fuel, maybe buy another ship, and then get the heck out of here and start doing those other missions. Now, if you want to make credits as fast as possible, this is the way to do it. Is just keep doing this. You just buy more ships and you just keep doing this. Black market trading. There's a few problems with this though. So that's why I'm going to be transitioning into a exploration phase after doing the black market early on. The problems with the black market are number one, and this is important. It's really boring. Maybe other people find it more interesting. I don't. This is clicking stacks and making making stacks. It's just not that interesting to me. But there are other like mechanical reasons why you would want to do other things. For starters, you do need to find places to colonize. And if you're going to be doing exploration, I mean, even though we can't really survey any planets right now, what we can do is we can find gates. Oh, do I, I don't have any fuel? Are you kidding me? I did not check my fuel gauge. And somebody's chasing me. No. That's right. Get scared off by a random patrol. Idiot. Fool. Yeah, you'd be surprised. You know, you think, oh, this game is... You know, playing video games isn't that hard. And it isn't. Up until you need to, like, remember to do things. What am I saying? I'm saying words. What I'm talking about is talking and playing a video game is so much harder. That's what I'm trying to get at. Uh, forgive me, but I am... I'm talking and I'm trying to play a video game. And you think that that's easy, but... Or I thought it was easy. It's not. It's... It's like YouTubers are always like, Haha, I made a mistake. I'm so stupid. No, they're not. They're lying. When they say that, they're a lying... Bastard. They're a lying bastard. They're not stupid. They're just trying to cover up the fact that... T -t Talking and playing is actually kind of hard because... You son of a... You son of a glue gun. You're draining me more supplies. You know what? Stop the repairs. We don't need them. We don't even need them. See, this could have been avoided. This could have been so much easier if I just bought the supplies and the fuel in the first place instead of buying all those drugs. There we go. Yeah, I've got no supplies. This is fine. Just... Oh! You almost got me. You almost did it again. Nope. Go away. Oh, do I have to do this? I was gonna say, do I have to like go back and forth through the asteroid field to get them to slow down? No, I don't. Okay, false readings. This should make life easier. And we're gonna do this. Stealth mode. Yep, just gonna creep up on them nice and easy. Yeah, see what I mean? It's not exactly hard, because even though I messed up at a couple points, we still got 23,000 credits. You know, you mess... It's just a little tedious, because you got to... Well, you got to do all of this, and it's taking up that extra time at the start. But then, you, of course, you get the, uh, you get the privilege of bragging about, hey, I know how to do this on spacer mode. It ain't even that hard. So you get the privilege of bragging about it, which is worth... And an infinite number of credits, really. Bragging rights are simply priceless. Now then, 134. Uh, what's your fuel prices looking like? Terrible. That's about it, what I expected. I'll buy five. <laughs> this is so bad. Uh, but my ships are breaking, so I'm going to buy that. Yeah, those are prices are terrible. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go somewhere more reason. Why does it keep centering on that? That's annoying. I'm going to go somewhere more reasonable. Yeah, I don't have the fuel to get there. But I have, a f I have enough fuel to get close enough that I can drift into the gravity well. And that's good enough for me. That'll get the job done.
Are you serious? I'm just making things up at this point. I thought... You, you saw the fuel ring on the map. You saw that. It was like 80% of the way there. I think any reasonable person would conclude that you could get there. That... You, I can't believe you. I have no supplies. I have no fuel. You are such a pain. Go away. Yeah, go away. I, I can't introduce false readings. Hopefully that's still, like, happening. <sighs> you. You sneaky son of a... I'm down to, like, 10% combat readiness. This is not good. Things are not looking good. We are in trouble. <laughs> I might just scrap one of these. That might work. Can you guys get out of the way? This is just rude at this point, honestly. This is just disrespectful. Have you no manners? All right, we're buying 10 of your overpriced fuel. No, nope, not off the open market. Just gotta make sure. Okay. We'll buy five of these. Okay, this will definitely get us there. So look at that. Look at that. With 10 fuel, the round trip says we're, we're like 90% of the way there. I think it was perfectly reasonable for me to think that five fuel would get me there. I was lied to by the indicators. See, it keeps centering on that instead of on your fleet. That's annoying. Don't do that. Stop. Okay. This is a thing. Let me go check this thing out. I mean, my salvaging efficiency is four. So I'm going to get one metal. Yeah. That's fine, though. Everything is fine. 20,000 credits is more than enough to get this expedition started. Now that we're in civilized space, or as civilized as a dictatorship can be. I mean, on the bright side, I can trade about as much as I want. A deficit on Sindria? What has the world come to? What is this? I should have checked beforehand. Yeah, I'm not... I'm not... No, I'm not going around. I'm not going to playing... Uh, you know, magical chairs, or whatever it's called. I, I'm not doing that. Just hopping around the sector. All right, we're going to take our slightly overpriced fuel, and we're going to live with it. And look at that. I don't even need another ship. I don't even need a dram. All you need is bulk transport and slap on those auxiliary fuel tanks. That's it. Life can just be as simple as that sometimes. All right, slap that on, just in case we do get into a situation where we need to disengage from a fight. Just just run faster, because we're definitely not shooting back. Okay. We can repair. Okay. I still have 14,000 credits. Do I really need anything? I'm going to say no. So I'll buy some of this so that I can actually salvage things. That's cool. Uh, is there a cheap... I could throw in a hound. Although, realistically, that's going to cost too much. I'd rather get, like, another kite. Yeah. Get more fuel capacity, get more cargo space. We're going to need a little bit more crew. That's fine. We'll go up to 10 crew. No. We'll go up to 15 crew. Well, 20 crew. Wow. Hey, look at me. High roller over here. We've got 20 crew. Might as well round that out with 20 heavy machinery. This should get us up above 4% efficiency when salvaging things. You know, just a little bit above that. Probably like... I, well, it depends on the thing you're salvaging. Of course. And then we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to slap this on, slap this on. Normally I'm not a fan of the increased maintenance cost, but... It does let you get more cargo capacity without needing to pay for more ships. And that has value. What can you do? You're looking like a low-tech officer with that one. Aggressive. I'm not going to pay for you right now. Uh, I'm, I'm just not going to spend the extra money. You know, it's 
Well, it's a little tight. Oh, I've got to buy more fuel, of course. Now I've got an extra ship. Up over 200. And there we go. Oh, I was kind of hoping the ring would expand a little further. You know what? It's fine. It's fine. It's not an issue. Okay, so how much time we got? We've got two directions we can go. We can pick up these two or these three. And I'm not worried about the fact that this is beyond the return sh uh, fuel range, the two-way trip fuel range, because we should find some fuel while we're out there. So that's really not an issue. This one's got a shorter... Actually, if I'm really... I could go do this one and then come back and do these ones. I think that would be maximum efficiency. And then drop this one. It also depends on the location. Some distance away from the center. See, that is a problem. Because how do I find that? I don't have a neutrino detector. I've just got to look for it. So that's going to be annoying. Inactive gate. Haha. -ha. See, this is nice. Even if you don't plan on taking these missions, you should check. You should check where the thing is. Because sometimes it's an inactive gate. Sometimes it's two inactive gates. And that's pretty useful to know, even if you don't plan on going there. So yeah, you know what? I'm not going to bother with that one. I'm just going to go do this. I'll turn those off. Really? I, I caught your attention, did I? Well, that's just... I guess, well, I guess it is Sindria, so they care about people selling fuel in the black market. That makes sense. It's their primary export. You know, people have a lot of political theories about how Sindria, like, couldn't... Like, the, the hegemony does manufacture some of its own fuel. So why is the sector so... Or rather... But, you know, they do manufacture some of their own fuel, but it's not in the quantities. It's only, like, a, a five in terms of output as opposed to eight. So, people have said, why doesn't Sindri just stop supplying fuel to the rest of the sector? That would starve them out. But what you've got to remember is, how do you make fuel? With volatiles, that's right. How many volatiles does Sindria have? If you guessed zero, then you'd be right. So in order to manufacture their fuel, they have to import volatiles. And suddenly, cutting the rest of the sector off their fuel supply doesn't seem like such a good idea. Because you're going to pay for... Uh-oh. Suddenly it doesn't seem like such a good idea. That's what I was saying. I'm going to start the burn. There we go. Let's just get... Let's just get away. Let's just fly away. Yeah. Alright, I'm going to grab this. So I can move faster even without sustained burn active. I'm not really going to... I'm going to hack it. You know, I'm not going to take control of it. That would be... Uh, that would be a waste of five heavy machinery. Everybody wants a piece of me. Oh. Can I scan this? Yes, I can. Okay. And free topographic data. That's very cool. 67% salvage. Although, it is a 14. So maybe I would just want to leave it here. And come back for it later. Now, yeah, there it is. Look at that. This is what the captain's log does for you. All of these ships that are here, they're going to be orbiting here permanently. So it just adds them to the log. And you can delete them if you want. You can remove them from the log if you don't care. But look at that. We've even got a paragon here. A paragon, a 14, and an omen. I mean, that's a pretty solid fleet combination. 14 falcons aren't crazy, but omens are pretty cracked. They're pretty insano style. God, these these words sound so funny. I should use more words that I magic words that I hear from people. They're very funny. They're very amusing. <laughs> so omens, very good. Uh, in terms of cost effectiveness, might be the best thing because they're good in the early game. They can one v one enemy frigates pretty easily with their high. They outrun most frigates. They've got better shields than most frigates. And their arc emitter has perfect accuracy. Which is pretty important because frigates, as it turns out, they miss each other a lot. 
it's having de it's got decent range and perfect accuracy it can 1v1 enemy frigates pretty well and then in the late game it's still useful because it's a great support ship it's great for capturing the points it's still good at en at 1v1 enemy frigates and it can support your larger ships with its you know ability to shoot down enemy fighters and its ability to disable enemy ships it's just good all game and compared to something like say a tempest a tempest is eight deployment points sure but it costs 45,000 credits. Compare that to an Omen being 25,000 with no demods off the black market. Like, the price to DP ratio is a lot better. They're just really good. And then, of course, they also give you increased sensor range and ECM. They're really good. I think Omens might be the best. I can actually recover this. It's got an S mod, too, Blast Doors. All right, I don't think I'm going to do that because I would immediately want to mothball it. So this is this doesn't even require an S mod either. Yeah, I'll be back. Maybe I don't need that Tritachion commission. Yeah, we're not going to get much from these salvage uh, missions because... Well, not missions, but salvaging things just because 20 crew and 20 uh, heavy machinery doesn't get you much. But... We also don't have a lot of cargo space, so that's why I'm not concerned about the efficiency anyways. If we were getting better efficiency, we would just max out our cargo space after a couple of hits. Yeah. So I can just come back and recover these if I want to later on. I mean, really, I should have gone through them each one by one to see if they had any officers. Maybe I could have salvaged something like the Dram, gotten a bunch of free fuel. But the Remnant was chasing me, and I didn't feel like dealing with that. Alright, let's move on. Enough dilly-dallying. 69 days. Do I even need to say it? Nice. Let's just take a nice, relaxing trip through this hyperspace corridor. Ooh, did I just see... Yep, we are traveling at a clean 20, even through the deep hyperspace clouds. Even through the hyperspace clouds, we basically get no slowdown. That feels good. It's like, it feels like being a ghost. Because the bigger your fleet gets, the more the, the, the speed penalty is through the clouds. And eventually you're, going, you're dropping quite a bit, especially without the navigation skill. Okay, please don't let... Please, I hope there's nobody here to bother me this time. There's people here. Just don't bother me. I want to look at the stuff. You can get blueprints? I didn't even know that. Yeah, see, I've got more than enough heavy machinery, not enough crew. Huh. It's the pirate one as well. Interesting. So there's a lot of people... Their fleet compositions don't look immediate. I was about to say, don't look immediately threatening, but here we go. Yeah, can't can't do that. Leave me alone. Yeah, fight each other. There you go. I'd actually love to help whoever's helping me here. But I don't have any combat power. I, I actually don't even have weapons. I'm just going to pray for you. Just just win. Please win. Oh. That looks like the pirates are getting reinforcements. But that looks like a friendly fleet. And it's a lot bigger. I think we're going to be fine. Everything's going to be okay. Just let them deal with their problems. They're not my problems. Nope, that guy's just leaving. He's not even going to... Alright, we've got a level 5 officer. Now, sometimes level 5 officers are going to have random skill sets, like before, but one big change that everyone's happy with is a lot of officers now have templates, where it's a set, it is a set collection of skills that's previously decided. So, instead of getting random crap, you get stuff that's actually designed to be synergistic, and this looks like pretty low-tech. Combat endurance, 
I mean, that's just good on pretty much everything. You know, target analysis and ordnance expertise are also pretty generically good. Oh, wait, I was saying low tech. It's also got field modulation. This is definitely not a random skill set because it would. I, I'm pretty sure I've seen this one before. I think this is meant to be a generic one because it's got both armor and shield bonuses. And so it can work on a phase ship, it can work on a low tech ship. Yeah, this is probably meant to be a generic one. I'll hold on to this guy. Probably not for the late game, but I'll hold on to it right now. Yeah, leave me alone. Go away. I'll just scrap that. You know, fighter LPCs, compared to weapons, are worth a lot of cash. And I don't really plan on using talons. Pods, organs. Organs are worth money. You can see we're filling up the cargo pretty fast. I mean, a lot of that is metals, which we, we can just dump to get higher value stuff, but nah, they're following me again. I guess they just really don't like that I'm salvaging the same stuff. That must be it, which I've never noticed before because I've never been this vulnerable to such tiny fleets. But it seems like there's some kind of uh, programming in the AI where they, they're just here to salvage, and if you get in their way and salvage the stuff, they don't like that. Interesting. I mean, I'd love to... I'd love to s do a survey here, because this is... With this much debris in orbit, this is clearly vast ruins. Now, of course, thanks to the captain's log, I can find this place later without having to write it down. So that's pretty neat. But even if, even without that, I would know this is vast ruins. Yeah, I'm, I very much recommend the 87 crew. That is going to massively increase our efficiency at this. Yeah, we're going to run out of space. Gamma core is pretty cool. And you're not going to find much good at these uh, orbital habitats, usually. It's mostly just going to be a bunch of bulk stuff. Gamma core is kind of the best that you usually get. There's not much to say there. I do want to go back and salvage those other ships. If possible. I also don't want to waste too much time here. Because this is... Oh, it's 51 days. We're fine. We're fine. It's a non-issue. For a god gamer, this is not an issue. It's kind of like hidden in the code. You know, not a lot of people know about this, but uh, just being a god gamer, the game gives you a speed buff, actually. Yeah, I know. It's a pretty, pretty little known fact. So, this is opened, and we've now got art for the equipment caches. I didn't notice that that was even missing, to be honest. When I was, you know, equipment caches, they didn't have that before. But once they added the art, it's like, oh, I actually really like that. Like, I didn't, like, I never thought when I was opening these equipment caches before, like, oh, you know, this would be so much better if it had art. That wasn't crossing my mind. But now that they have it, yeah, it is better, actually. Okay. Let's see if we can sneakily grab these last two. And nobody's coming to bother me, so we... Yeah, we're fine. Of course, it's just metal and fuels, which is useless to me right now. There we go. A little bit of organs, a little bit of good stuff. Am I over fuel capacity? Yeah, I accidentally grabbed the fuel. All right, now let's get out of here. Need a little bit of water there. Hmm. So, so the slip surge is interesting because it kind of, well, it's like a slingshot. It shoots you really far. It's like it looks a little bit like, <coughs> excuse me, it looks a little bit like a mini slipstream. But you have to generate it near like a gravity source, and I think the intensity of the gravity source increases how far it shoots you. That's what I believe. I believe that's how it works. So if you set it up near a black hole, it'll shoot you really far and really fast. I haven't actually used it yet. So I'm gonna I'm excited to find out. 
Oh, while we're out here, look at all these red dwarfs. You know, the funny thing is, you know, this is a fun little astronomy effect for the day. Yeah, we failed one of them. That's not an issue. A fun little astronomy... In fact, I'll abandon this one preemptively. Yeah, you can't... You can't fire me, I quit. So, fun little astronomy effect. 80% uh, of the stars in the universe are actually red dwarfs. 80%. So, if this game wanted to be realistic, uh, it would be a lot less interesting because then all of the, most of the stars would be the same. Oh, look, I'm going to have to look at that. So, sometimes realism is not what's best for gameplay, as you might expect. You know, some people are like... Some people really hone in on realism as if it's the most important thing. But really what you want the game to do is to react to your decisions. You want to feel like... Like if you do something and the game doesn't notice that you did the thing... Uh, Gabe Newell will refer to that as a narcissistic injury. Yeah, I'll take that. Just take the core. I know I've done this song and dance before. Don't care about the details. Is this another water world with vast ruins? Interesting. I'll have to come back here later. Yeah, Gabe Newell refers to when the game does not acknowledge your decisions as a narcissistic injury. Because it's like, oh, you're ignoring me. Which is nonsense because a game can't ignore you, but that's what it feels like. And that just makes a lot of sense to me. But, yeah, going back to the astronomy lesson. Mm, are you friendly? Are you nice? Alright, they're not coming towards me. They're definitely nice. So 80% of the stars are red dwarfs. Now, you might look up at the night sky and notice there's no red stars that you see. And this is where things get a little wild, is that not only are 80% of the stars red dwarfs, you can't see red dwarfs with the naked eye. You actually need a telescope just to see them. So when you, even if you get away from the city where the light kind of interferes with the night sky, even if you get away from it, and you're looking up at the night sky and you're seeing all of that glorious illumination. You're not, you're not even seeing 80% of what's there. Isn't that crazy? So that's a, yeah, it's a fun little astronomy effect for the day. I think I want these two. What have you got? What's your uh, D mods? Erratic fuel injector, degrade, dry field is a non-issue because of Bulk transport, you're actually up to 10 anyways. Compromised storage doesn't matter too much. Your fuel you're you're fine. Erratic fuel ejector is a little annoying, but I think we can live with it. What have you got? Degraded dry field. Now that's kind of an issue. That's going to slow us down. I want the extra cargo space, but that's going to slow us down. And I'm not going to be getting hull restoration for a while. Plus increased maintenance. Plus L plus ratio. I don't even use Twitter, but I find it funny to use the words that they use on Twitter. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not called Twitter anymore. It's, uh, it's something else now. You've changed, Twitter. You've changed. Alright, what have we got here? Okay. See, this is another nice thing. You just get free hall mods and stuff. Even though, yes, credits wise purely from credits it's more efficient to just do black market trading when you come out here you find stuff you find gates you find ruins to explore you find free hall mods and if you're lucky if you're lucky you even find colony items like the last playthrough i started up just as a little test run before this i ended up finding two fullerene spools during this stage of the game where i'm just flying around like this i found two fullerene spools oh you're hostile Oh, this isn't good. And two corrupted nanoforges. Two fullerene spills and two corrupted nanoforges, which was annoying because I wasn't actually going to do that playthrough since I didn't record anything. And I very rarely seem to find fullerene spools. They're so good. They're so good. But I very rarely find them. And of course I find them when I'm not actually going to keep them. You know, it's just... <sighs> like, yeah, of course that would happen. All right, we made a decent amount of cash. All right, are these... Hold on, let me check. Salvage. Yeah, the Venture, that's a... That's going to be there permanently. This isn't. See, these ones are from... 
somebody getting into a little scuffle. Well, the venture is something that's pre-spawned in here, so it's going to stick around. Now, I could at least explore it to see if there's like a... Yeah, see, we can even recover this without a story point. Yeah, I, I don't want it to... I mean, that would push it with... Uh, it is a civilian hull, so... It should get the plus two from... Right? Yeah, it does get the plus two. It just didn't show up before. Okay. Maximum burn at nine. I even have enough crew after finding all that crew. I'm not a fan of the venture, but it does have things like survey equipment. And we can just... We can just do that. That's a thing we can just grab. I don't want to repair it too much, though, because it's going to eat up all my supplies. Although, now that I've got all this extra cargo space, I can go grab the supplies I left behind. I still can't survey this, huh? Yeah, you need 250 crew. You need a lot. Okay. All right, I see how it is. Yeah, I can just... I can just grab all a lot of those supplies that I left behind, and that should pay for the repair cost. You know, assuming I can find the supplies again. Let's go back over. Yeah, my number one priority when I get back is really just going to be buy lots of omens. Yeah, once this is out of... Yeah, we're going to hit Q. We're going to put all the repairs on halt so that we're only paying maintenance costs. Uh, what was your demod again? Structural damage. So, worse in combat. Man, I am so close to being able to survey this, now that I've got this surveying equipment. Actually, that's tempting, because this, if I S-mod this, I could do that, and I wouldn't have to come back here later. Plus, getting that bonus XP does mean you level up faster. So, yeah, I'll do that. Huh? Um, I thought this would go down by another 20. Is it... Am I crazy? Is this... Am I misremembering? Was it 150 before? I thought it was 130. It says minus 40 here. I thought this was 130. Oh well. I guess I made a mistake, or that's bugged. I'll have to look at that in the footage later. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I'm willing to get slowed down to carry this thing around. It seems like it'll be useful. I don't like how they're immediately moving towards me. Yeah, no. Not having any of that. Bye. Let's get on the slip and slide. Just try to stay in the center. There's like a little, you can see the, the texture in the center is a little bit different because it's faster in that spot. Oh, I'm actually a little bit short of the fuel needed. And I can pop into pretty much any system and find that some salvage with some fuel. That'll be fine. Can I get some topographic data for this? Please. I've been riding this for a while now. The, the amount of time you need to spend at high speeds to get data seems a bit silly. Like, I feel like I should have gotten data twice by now. That's a long ride. Yeah, I, f I feel like that should have given me topographic data for that long of, for... Alright, well. That's just the way it is. No, no, we can reach, we're fine. We saved fuel going down the slip and slide. Alright, let's go here, because... This place... Hey, there it is. You're a little late to the party, but you showed up. 
and that's what matters. That's a lie. That's not what matters. What matters is being consistent. Should probably repair this because it's going to have malfunctions at that percentage. Or I think it is. Or does it only start at zero? I've always assumed that it's that they start having problems when they're in the red, but it might even it might only start at zero. And we're getting some of these. Don't care. Actually, I could... Hold on. Let's go back to this. Oh yeah, I'm right next to it. I could stop by here to pick up some stuff. I've already spent my story point. I would love to grab that, uh, that omen, but I've already spent my story point. So what else is there? Yeah, I'll come back later. It's fine. We'll come back later. We got 202,000 credits. We can just go to the core world and just buy stuff. We can just buy stuff. Now, I did grab this venture, but I'm wondering. I might end up just scrapping it anyways, which sounds a little crazy, but hear me out. When you have a lot of frigates in the early game, you can kind of punch above your weight class because the enemy can't really pin down any of your ships. They, they, you know, they get in, they do a bit of damage, they sl and then they slip away. And if you've got something decent as your flagship, you can just have a bunch of frigates distract the enemy fleet while you go around killing things one at a time. Let's scan that. I'm not going to remember that half the time. I mean, it's pretty small anyways, but yeah, I'm just not going to remember. So what you can do with frigates is you can punch above your weight class by having them distract the enemy fleet while you go around killing things one at a time with your flagship. When you've got a venture and you deploy that into combat, that kind of ruins that plan because it's going to die. Yeah, kind of sucks. But then again, I could just not deploy it if I don't think it's going to be useful. That is an option. It does provide me with a bunch of cargo capacity and stuff. So there are reasons to keep it around. You know, if I can get the new escort... Uh, escort package, which... If I put that on a Sunder, and then I have the Sunder escort this thing, because it's a cruiser, then the escort package will give it... I don't know if you guys know about this yet, but it's a new... Ha it's They've taken the escort package and reworked it. So now what it does is if you put it on a destroyer and it's near a cruiser, or you put it on a cruiser and it's near a capital ship, they get bonus, like, not only bonus maneuvering, but they also get bonus range. And it's pretty big. Like, and the, the bonus for a destroyer is doubled if it's near a capital. So it gets a bonus for being near a cruiser and twice that for being near a capital. It's a 20% baseline, so a destroyer near a capital with the escort package gets 40% extra range. So a Sunder... I, I kind of want to try this, but I'm not convinced it's going to be very good. Simply because the AI is going to be a little squirrely. If you've got Sunders trying to follow around a Paragon close enough that they still get the bonus. But it is going to be interesting, because a Sunder with... You know, you, you put on a Tachyon Lance and a couple Graviton Beams. next, And you have it hover around next to Paragon. It can have 1800 range with Targeting Unit, Advanced Optics, and that Escort Package. And then if you throw in Gunnery Implants for the Officer for good measure. And it's got 1,950 range on that Tachyon Lance. That's pretty close to the, the range of a Tachyon Lance on the Paragon itself. So as a, as a ship supporting the Paragon, that sounds like it could actually be a really good idea. And then you could even throw on a converted hangar for some extra ships, some extra fighters to support. And that could be really good. And then what you could do is with the Paragon itself, you could give it Paladins in the turrets, which I know hurts its DPS, but Paladins are the only ship-mounted point defense weapon that can shoot over allies. So the cool thing about mounting Paladins on a Paragon is not only does it protect the Paragon, it also protects everything nearby, which is going to include these Sunders. So you don't even need to put point defense on the Sunders. You can, you can, don't bother with that. You can just put on more stuff to shoot with. And then the, while the Paragon has to give up that firepower, it kind of makes up for it by having these Sunders 
with their tachyon lances. Or you could do manticores with like with a Gauss cannon and a pair of harpoon pods. Right? You could you can go crazy with it. So it's definitely going to be an interesting option. I might explore that later. But for now, what I'm really concerned about is first of all, I'm going to get some fuel. Look at that, 12 per unit. Yes. Instant yes. All right, we're going to sell a bunch of stuff we don't need. Uh, my first concern is really going to be buying omens, just because, well, you'll see. It's a very, as I've said, very cost-effective. They're good at all stages of the game. Sometimes I use them as a crutch. I'm not ashamed of it. If you try omens, you'll see why. You'll just see why. It is, life is easier with omens. You know, that could be their tagline. Look, I'm such a, I am such a great Tritachion employee. I already know, I, I've come up with corpo speak, I've got taglines for their products, it's a great time. Except that omens aren't exclusive to Tritachion, you can actually find them pretty commonly in Persian League places as well. I've even got an antimatter blaster, which is perfect. Because omens and antimatter blasters are the best combination you can ask for. And before I was already putting salamanders on them, but now salamanders are finally priced at a reasonable price. So this is actually a good idea instead of just a, a mediocre idea. Yeah. I mean, these are cheaper than Pylums now, the, the two-shot variant. So I think people are actually going to use them. That'll be a sight to see. Okay, what are we looking for? We're looking for... All right, Glacia. Yeah, I guess I can do that. Hop over there. Got any officers? Nope. The eternal hunt for officers is going to be so much fun. Yeah, this one's missing target analysis, but it's got more... It's got helmsmanship, and this thing desperately needs it. And polarized armor. Yeah, I guess I'll go with that. I mean, it's probably not going to go in combat, but... Might as well. Yeah, don't bother me. No. It's a little interesting how you can have an extreme level of suspicion at the black market, but the guys orbiting the jump points just don't care. I guess they're not very good at sharing information. Yeah, you know, you'd think with faster than light communications, which the game clearly has, that they'd be better at that, but they're not. It's no wonder the sector's falling apart. Yep. My name is Paul Bingus. I'm returning a data core for the Provost Reward. That is a very powerful statement. So is there, there's still a reward, right? Yeah. I've done the song and dance before. Yep, yep. And then this is the part where a bunch of... You're like, hey, I'm like a poor guy with radiation burns and stuff. Or I guess your character doesn't necessarily have those things, but you're used to seeing those things because you're surrounded by spacers. Whereas these guys, they don't have radiation burns, right? They're augmentations, they're cybernetics. They're not just there for functionality. They're there to look pretty. Crazy. You can either smile and wink at them or play a cool eyes forward. We're going to go with eyes forward today. Uh, I'm just not going to say anything because nothing I say matters to you. Hey, look, I don't care that you're a uh, conniving snake. I'm just here to get paid and to get my gadget. That's about it. And here to... Oh! That's right, I had a portrait of, of uh, Alvis with sunglasses because it makes him look 50% less depressed and represents how cool and awesome this guy is. I forgot to put that back in when I got the patch downloaded. That's an oopsie. I can always do that later. Okay. Only two jobs? It's nice when they give you four, but they're only giving me two today. And this one's pretty far. That's fine, though. It's not, it's not a big deal. Cannibals, pirates. Ooh, scary. Yeah, I'm very persuasive. And by that, I mean I'm going to be using... I didn't find it. That's right. I only found crew. A lot of the time, you'll find some marines. And if you can get, like, you really don't need that many. You only need, like, 20 marines to do the uh, the missions for extracting the researcher. 
instead of paying the bribe. It, you, like, the number of marines you need is really, really low. So if you find them for free while you're out there, it's not a bad deal. Okay. Alright. So really what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hunt down omens for a little bit. All right, these don't have time limits, so I'm not worried about them. I'm not seeing any interesting missions. Yeah, these. so I'm just going to go over to Tritachion, and I'm going to hit some... I'm going to hit Tritachion, Persian League, and some independent worlds. And I'm just going to grab five omens. That's what I'm looking for. Five omens. In my experience, that's just the right number. It's gonna, you're going to shove officers into them. And they perform excellently. I think one of the most, perhaps one of the most, underappreciated skills is not Wolfpack Tactics. That one's pretty good. I think most people know that. But coordinated maneuvers. Because even if your frigates aren't killing things, getting that 20% nav rating for your entire fleet, it's subtle, but that extra top speed makes a, a fleet-wide it makes such a difference. And plus, you never have to worry about running out of command points because you're getting plus 200. If you have five omens with officers, you're getting plus 250%. And part of the reason for five omens is, you know, four capture points on the map. You have one for each plus an extra one. It's just really useful. Of course, I'm going to have to get to these later. So I want to go down, grab this. Hull Restoration a nice change. It's no longer giving you combat readiness based off of your S mods. I mean, what, it's, what a system, really. No, now it just gives you the 15% combat readiness, and it subtracts some of it if you have D mods. But of course, the Hall Restoration removes the D mods anyways. So, it's kind of a temporary deep... It's kind of temporarily you don't get the combat readiness, and then once you've repaired your ship, it's basically crew training. Now, a capstone having the same combat power as crew training seems bad until you remember that crew training is really good. Uh, getting a 15% combat readiness is a 5% bonus to damage dealt, 5% reduced damage taken. And you got to remember, that's not just to one thing. It's like field modulation is 15% to shields. 5% reduced damage taken is to everything. And then also 5% top speed. And then also, when you run out of combat readiness, you last longer before having malfunctions. It's a bunch of small buffs, but it's fleet-wide, and they really add up. It's, it's a really good skill. So even as a capstone, plus the economic effects, it's pretty good. You know, stacking both of them may be worth it. Plus, there's a few other changes that I really like. A neural link has finally dropped down a tier, because it's a fun skill. I like using it. But it's not a capstone. You're not fooling me. You're not fooling anybody. This is not a capstone. Cybernetic augmentation has taken its place. And as you see there, instead of getting two elite skills on your officers, you're only getting one extra. But the second effect is the more elite skills you have on your player. Right, so that means more combat skills that you've made elite. Gives a fleet-wide damage dealt and damage received bonus. So if you've got five elite combat skills then that's a 5% damage taken and damage received bonus. Which is, of course, the same effect as crew training, but worse, because you don't get you don't get the, sp the top speed. But, of course, there's no reason that you should stop at 5. You can go up to 10. You can go up to as many as you can, you can, can see, as you could feasibly do with your skill points at max level. Maybe that's not the best build, but you could make a decent argument for something around the range of, like, you know, 8, 9, 10, maybe 11 if you're pushing it. And that's 11% extra damage fleet-wide and 11% reduced damage taken. And sure, those combat skills that you're taking are skills that you're not putting into other stuff to boost your fleet. But what you end up with there, especially if you take Neuralink, is now you've got two flagships with like 11 skills. And you still get some nice fleet-wide bonuses. You're still getting like an ele like a 10% bonus damage dealt and reduced damage taken fleet-wide. So it allows you to have the advantages of really good player ships 
without sacrificing overall fleet quality. I think it kind of enables new ways to build your character that weren't available before, which is interesting. And plus, the, the damage dealt bonus is doubled for the flagship. So you're going to have, you know, 10 skills for your flagship, you're taking 10% reduced damage, and you're dealing 20% increased damage on top of all your skills. Yeah, it's going to be pretty good. Also, ECM got a nice little buff. Uh, capturing objectives is now like 400% faster, and you do it from a longer range, so you don't even need to be on the capture point, you just need to be near it. I think this was my idea. You know what? This was definitely my idea. I suggested a bunch of different things. Some of them were a little out there, like spawning a fifth capture point that would be only you could capture, but the opponent couldn't capture. They could just deny it from you. They could make it neutral. You know, I had some ideas for what this could do because I wanted it to be more interesting than just a, you know, a stat boost to your ECM. And one of the things I suggested was capturing the points faster. And it looks like they actually did that. This is actually, I mean, it seems kind of pointless because it doesn't, it's a soft factor, right? It doesn't increase your raw fighting capability. But what it does do is it makes a lot of strategies more consistent, especially on that godforsaken rectangle map where both of the capture points, where the four capture points are kind of split so that there's two on the enemy side and two on your side. Like the other arrangements, all the other arrangements, you can pretty consistently get three capture points and deploy all your stuff. That map, uh, you'd better bring some phase ships or you're going to have some trouble. But I think with this, it's going to be a lot easier to consistently get three at the same time so you can actually deploy all your ships. So it's going to be nice. I like that. It, it, uh, it doesn't enable new strategies, but it does make some strategies that aren't using things like phase ships to capture the points. It's making those strategies more consistent. Which is, I like that. Uh, plus, there's been a bit of an ECM rework. I'm not really going to talk about that here. I've, I've talked enough. Now let's just move on. Domain era probe. It's kind of in the wrong direction. I want to go up this way. Oh, hold on. Let me go look at it again. Is it around a gate? No. Asteroid field. Okay. Whoa. That guy was moving. I guess the combination of emergency burn plus hitting a storm. But even then, I don't think it would be that fast. Or maybe it just is. I'm wondering if pausing there caused like a bug that made them speed up. Probably not. But maybe. Well, anyways, I'm going to give you guys this... Oh, actually... I only have one, which is a bit annoying, because you want to sell, you want to give them to Tritac in pairs so you can actually increase your reputation. That's something you want to do. Uh, five D-Mods on the open market is about the same price as Pristine on the black market. Let that sink in. You know, they show up an often enough Pristine on the black market that I'm really not... I'm just not going to take that, you know? I don't need to. I'm not that desperate. Yet. I'm not that desperate yet. You know, we can move on. We can just go over here. So we're yeah, maybe six months in. That is right where I want it. Thank you. Let's see. Orbiting a Terran world. That could be good. We'll have to find out when we get there. All right, let's see. Uh, I want to see... Yeah, the double-clicking is still there. I still need a new mouse. But I'm also broke. So I'm going to keep using this. Uh, let's see. No, I guess the... Yeah, I'm trying to see if there's the thing that keeps track of how many days you've been in-game. But that is a Nexerilin feature. That's not a Captain's Log feature. But yeah, it's about six months in-game. Hopefully by... You know, maybe by the second year we can get our colony started, see what happens. I guess I'll scan this. Might as well. Alright, let's get in there. What do you guys got for me? 
You know, finding any anti I'm just gonna keep checking just in case I got any matter blasters. Nope. I mean, there's lots of stuff I could buy, but I'm not going to. I'm committed. I've I said I was gonna do omens. I'm gonna do omens because I need to show exactly why they're so good. I mean, I've I've showed that before, but that was in like a mission. I need to show in campaign why they're so good. Let's scan this. I, th I yeah, I think I really do think it's a little silly that you can scan things in the core worlds. It feels like that shouldn't count, but it does. Escort package, there it is. You want to pause and read what it does? Just have a look. Yeah. All right, antimatter blasters. That's good. We like that. I'm seeing an omen on the open market. It's a little overpriced. I'll take it. I'm seeing two on the black market. Here we go. This is what I like to see. We're a little low on crew. That is just fine. I can just buy more crew. Also, I'm going to scrap a lot of this crap. I'm going to move myself over to the dram. And I'm going to scrap this stuff. We don't need it. It's useless to me. Okay. Injector to make sure we can run. Max out caps. While we're at it, auxiliary thrusters, which got its cost reduced, finally. And now the s -mod bonus increases your zero flux boost. That might be really good with safety overrides. Who's to say? Who's to say? I guess I need to throw in something else. Hardened shields. Yeah, let's go with that. Okay. I've even got exactly three animator blasters. That is so cool. And there's three salamanders available at this station. This is perfect. The numbers add up. And the numbers don't lie. We'll just do that. Custom. Oh, and you know what? I can actually sit here and come up with some names for these ships. And maybe give this thing a loadout. All right, obviously, you know, this is a very powerful ship right here. So we're going to call this the the right hand of hatred. I mean, you've got to let the enemies know that this is a this is a showstopper right here. This thing is dangerous. Hot to trot. No. I think I'm going to call you Winter's Last Breath. Fortuitious? Cerulean Skies. How about uh, Tears of Neptune? And you, my friend, you can be Um, you can be no graves on Jupiter. We'll call you the Jupiter for short. Eventually I'm going to run out of ideas and then I'll just start stealing names from Halo. Because, I don't know about you, but the names of ships in Halo are... They have no right to be as good as they are. Like, Shadow of Intent, Pillar of Autumn, Long Night of Solace. Like, come on. Come on. How do you... That is, they're, just, they're just so good. Okay, I'm not really liking my options here. I'll just throw in a Sabo in a Breach. I'm not really planning to throw you into combat. I guess it doesn't hurt to have some hypervelocity drivers. Uh, then I'll throw in a medium burst PD. As for this, you get structural damage, which sucks. That sucks. Probably want that. And then we'll throw in vents. Yeah. Just in case you end up in combat. That ordnance expertise is doing a lot of work here. And with field modulation and max caps, you can probably... Oh, you know what I don't have? That's kind of important. A targeting core. Of course. Obviously. Uh, but I still want these. I'm going to get one. We'll go with that. Yeah, that should be fine. It's going to take so long to vent. Do I have... 
I do have resistant flux conduits. Let's go with that. That'll reduce the venting time, and mostly you're worried about EMP damage on something like this. I'd be more worried about that than regular damage disabling the weapons. So that's fine. That's good. Okay. Cool. Not really planning to deploy it, but just in case. No officers. We'd love to see it. Oh, right. And now I'm over fuel capacity. Hold on. Yeah, I'll just buy these. Forget about I'll just buy them. And I... You know what? Uh, cargo capacity, I'll take that. And I'll take more fuel capacity, because I need that right now. And I'll grab more crew. We're going to go up to... 250. Yeah, that's a good number. I like that. I uh, don't really need to worry about heavy machinery here. How much is that costing me? You know what that's costing me? It's costing me less than the price of... It's costing me the less of the price of the bribe that I need to pay to get that guy out. I'm not actually sure it's the same mission type that I'm thinking of. Maybe I don't need these, but I'm going to carry around a small batch of marines regardless. All right, hold on. So, Ransom Researcher. Yeah, this should be the one where you can you can just fight your way in. And you only need, like, 20. It's a really low difficulty mission. In fact, 16 might be enough. But just in case, I'm going to grab... I'll go up to 20. Precisely. It's a nice clean number. Okay. Yeah, I don't really think I'm going to be using this. I'll wait to get it for free from some random station. And there's two more omens right there. Look at that. We can just afford them. They're just so affordable. And there we go. Okay, perfect. I don't have any officers for them, and I've run out of stuff here. Unfortunate. So I'll just have to improvise a little bit. I mean, it's mostly going to be the same. If I find more... If I find more of those antimatter blasters, though, I will be excited. Do I have any... Nope. No, I do not. You need to throw like a we like a regular weapon on them just so that they get into range, because if you don't, they sit really far away because they don't think they can fight, even if they have missiles. I mean, missiles don't do it. You have to give them something that they can shoot at the enemy, even if it's kind of useless. Yeah, we'll throw in that. There we go. All right, do you have officers? No. That's going to be a recurring theme, by the way. It's kind of annoying, finding officers. Hiring them from scratch. And even if you do find them, a lot of the time they don't have the right skills. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. You're going to hurt my ships. Petty bastard. Yeah, go on. Get out of here. I'm going to be your boss soon enough. We'll see who... We'll see who is... We'll see who's harassing who then, huh? Damn, I should have remembered that guy's name just in case he still exists later. That's in the right direction. Where is it? Jump point. That's going to be easy to find. So it won't even take that much time. Why am I going right? Okay. You know what? I forgot to buy more supplies. I've got enough fuel, though. That's nice. Okay. Again, these are all clustering right where I need them. That's going to make this go faster. All right. Wrong direction. Okay. It's close by, so you could still, like, grab it and come back, but I don't want to waste the time doing that. I'm not that desperate for cash. Oakley Doakley. Closing in on the target. Gangster. His... Gangster. Name, Shrapnel Lee. Rank, Citizen. Gangster. I never noticed that before. He, this guy's just a gangster. See, look at that. Danger, minimal. We've got enough forces. 
Just do it. Getting those Marines was cheap. Running the mission is easy. We're out of here. Simple as. Yeah, there's the debt rolling in. Hold on, let me have a look. Hit D to go to the command tab. Hit 3 to see your income. An obligation from your past. Probably child support. Paul Bingus really isn't a responsible guy. That should be obvious by this point. I mean, his name is Bingus. I'm sure he comes from a long line of Binguses. You know, the Bingus family line was once a great name, but, you know, not in the modern day, that's for sure. It all started with his grandfather, Joseph Bingus. He ruined everything. But of course, we don't talk about that anymore. It's dead and gone. Buried in the past. I need fuel. Oh, that's gonna make... Oh, I forgot my transponder. Uh, yeah, leave me alone. Bye. Yeah, 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 okay, harass me, fine. Harass me. I don't care. Harass me! And go away. I want to scan this, because magnetic fields give you five. And getting that hyperspace topography up. I don't know who's, like, playing with the random generator today, but this is... This is a lot. This is a lot. That's a lot of stuff in the right direction. I'm just gonna buy all of this. I'm gonna buy that. That should be enough fuel. Target. Oh, I can't afford both. I can't afford anything. I'm just gonna sell these because I'm not using them. If I need them, I'll buy them later. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, so I can swap this out for this and get that 5% extra range. Massive. It's huge. Some might even... I might even go as far as to say that that bonus is large. Hey, let's install this. Uh, do I have any good... You know what? That's not bad. I can't afford that. We'll just slap that up. Yeah, there we go. And you? Yeah, I should have done this earlier. Unstable injector. Yeah, let's get that up. Uh, what are you doing? Yeah, let's get the uh, let's get the sensors. There we go, and we'll call that a loadout. We'll call that a loadout so we can slap it on over here. Things are coming together. Now I just need something to work as a flagship so I can do a little more work in combat. Uh, do you guys have any matter black? Nope. You know I'm not going to go hunting for them. I've already got three. I'll find the rest later. It'll be fine. So first off, I'm gonna go check this stuff out. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do these missions for Galatia Academy, and then I'm gonna come back, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna save, and I'm gonna call it there. Yeah, that would be a good place to call it. Let's see, how long has I been going? Almost. We're close to. Uh, it's been a while. Yeah, I think what I'm going to start doing is just running up, like, fun astronomy facts so that I have something to talk about during travel. Like, uh, well, I, I mean, I've got another one. I guess I'll just use that next time. Okay, this is going to be... Easy enough. Just send in these three with the Animator Blasters, and now we can watch. I mean, hopefully it's obvious why Omens would just demolish these things. You know, setting aside the D-Mods, they have no shields. EMP is just going to destroy them. Makes it very clean, very easy. Well, I mean, this has a shield, but it's not very good. They could stand to be a little more aggressive, though. You know, don't want to take unnecessary risks, but I also don't want to sit here for too long, because it's a foregone conclusion. Very 
venting? Really? What is this, Among Us? Hey, hey, Gen Zers will like that joke. Probably. Actually, it's funny, most of my audience is not Gen Z, I think. YouTube metrics are telling me that, funny enough, two-thirds of my audience is older than me. Yeah, that's a little truth bomb for you. I'm actually Gen Z myself. You know, on the older end, of course, as you might expect. But, you know, usually YouTubers get made fun of for having a kid audience. <laughs> no one's going to levy that against me. That's a fact. If anything, they're going to make fun of my audience for being a retirement home. I mean, some of you, I, I mean, like it's a pretty significant chunk of you, are in your 30s. Like, damn. You know, ki kids these days, Gen Alpha is calling Gen Z old these days. You know, grandpa, you know, get a, you know, why don't you retire soon, grandpa? That kind of thing. You're 28? You're old. But, I mean, if there's one thing that you're going to learn from... I was going to... Yeah, I don't think I want to say that, actually. This... Maybe if, I could, maybe if I can think of another word that's not... You know what? I'm just going to let that die. That's a, that, that thought can just die. It'll, we'll just count that as an intrusive thought, and we're not going to say it. We'll leave it there. Yeah, these things are little bastards. Those double salamanders with the fast missile racks. Because, you know, you can do a lot of work with a wolf in the early game as your flagship. You know, with a little bit of piloting practice, you can do a lot of work with that thing. But those salamander spam... You you would think, you would think that having a face skimmer would make it easy to deal with. It's not easy to deal with. It's annoying. You're gonna get hit at some point if there's like two of those things spamming them at you. Yeah, it's a it's a problem. Are these just the metals that I left behind? Yeah, I could fill up my cargo with those, but it's why bother? I'm gonna dump them later. I know I'm gonna dump them later. Okay. More automated defenses. More free loot. I mean, seriously, I think with these five omens, plus maybe if I grab a Sunder and use that as my flagship, we can even take on the uh, the derelict mothership. We, I would probably need coordinated... Yeah, I think... I would need coordinated maneuvers and crew training to pull that off. And probably... Yeah, probably Wolfpack Tactics too. Not so much for the damage, but for the extra, the extra peak performance time, because it's going to be a long fight. But with just these five plus like a Sunder as your flagship, you can you can run through that mission. You know, just grab a high intensity laser. They don't have shields to stop you. You can just burn through them, and the omens are going to keep them distracted. They're definitely not going to die. Not until they start running out of combat readiness. So you can definitely do an early. Now, of course, if you're a, a god gamer, you can do it with like a, just just the Sunder itself and nothing else. Throw on some safety overrides. Uh, but uh, I don't want to do that. It sounds too. It sounds. Uh, I mean, it'd be fun. It's the kind of thing that would be fun to do once, but I don't want to do that regularly. All right, uh, where exactly is this? Jump point, okay, so it's gonna be around the other jump point. All right, what have you got? Mm, I was gonna say, if it's just destroyers, we could handle this pretty easily. But the fact that there's the big one, the big boy, I don't wanna deal with, uh, it's got a squall, which can be easily, I mean, it got nerfed. They got less hit points now, and these things can, Deal with, they can dodge those pretty easily. And its large guns are high explosive, so that's not too much of an issue. <laughs> Honestly, I would do... If I had the wolf to go along with this from the Bounty Hunter Star, I would totally take this. I would probably get my wolf killed, but I would definitely get that done. For now, I'm just going to leave that. I'm not going to worry about it. I can come back... See, the beautiful thing is I can just come back later. 
Actually, hold on. Let me... Did I explore it? Yeah, okay. So there was just no data to find. Or if I... Yeah, no, there's nothing. Because I can always come back for it later, because that's going to be in the salvage. It's going to be there. It's this little triangle. So, let's have a look. I can spend five supplies to do that. That's from the shoe. Let's grab these. Oh, I've leveled up. Very cool. Domain survey ship. Is that the same one that's already in the system? Because sometimes they pull that on you. Hold on. E. New. No, it's in a different... It's in a different system. Okay, sometimes they pull that on you where it's like, Ah, I found the location of a survey ship, and it's the same one in the same system. Not very... It's, uh, it's kind of lame. Kind of not cool. Right, first of all... I mean, I'm not piloting anything right in... Navigation's tempting because I'm not piloting anything right now, so ordinance expertise ain't great. But then again, you do kind of want to make a beeline for hull restoration. If you're starting in an industry, it's specifically so you can beeline for this. Because, you know, a lot of these are, you know, like this is really good on frigates, which you're going to be using a lot in the early game. So going for a lot of these things can be good. If you start in industry, then again, it is navigation. So I guess I'll just do that. Oh, and I do have story points now, so let's level up faster. I mean, I'm going to want th this upgrade eventually. I'll do three, and I'll hold on to one. So I plan on keeping these omens around. I do want that eventually anyways. And just doing it now means I get to level up faster. Which means I not only get more story points faster, but more skills. So you do actually want to... You do want to spend some of those 100%. You want to look for those things that give you 100% bonus XP, and you do want to grab those early on. Just, just for the ability to level up faster. I'm not sure if that's like an intended consequence, because the whole point of bonus XP is it's kind of like a... It's kind of refunding the story point, but... You know, it takes time to get the refund instead of getting it instantly. That's the idea. So I'm not sure how much the intended effect on speeding up the level up process is. But it definitely makes things, you know, it doubles your EXP, so you go faster. You level up faster. Taking half the time to get a new skill is worth doing. And you can see their vision range should be a lot bigger now. For these three specifically. Or was it just the two? No, I did three. Yeah. Which just so happened to be the ones with the antimatter blaster. It's convenient. Alright, let's grab this. Okay. Wait, hold on. What have we got here? What are they hiding from me? What secrets... I was about to say, what secrets does the hegemony not want me to know? Uh, it's just it's just more stuff. I'll send in more, not because they need more, just to make it go faster. We've seen this song and dance a million times before. Actually, you know that drug trading, now that I think about it at the beginning, is not really necessary. Just because you can go... If you skip the tutorial, the the survey ship with the gamma... With the, yeah, the gamma core is still there. Yeah, because you didn't you didn't grab it during the tutorial, so it's still just sitting there. So you can go grab that. And even with, like, two crew, uh, salvaging efficiency doesn't affect rare items like AI cores. So you should just be able to instantly grab that and then pawn it off to Tritachion for 30k. I think that works. We'll just, we'll just say that I didn't do that as a self-imposed challenge. Yeah, that's what we're going to say. So I, I guess I'll click on all of you, do that, you do that. While we're at it, you guys can be number one. Because you're the foundation of the fleet.
Maybe tactical laser is the wrong choice because he doesn't seem to be getting close enough to actually use the EMP emitter. Whereas even the long range PD laser, he does seem to be getting close enough to use it. So this one's kind of wasting his time. At least the tactical laser is okay against Hall. In fact, it's so okay against Hall that sometimes I've used it on hammerheads. I think I showed that in a mission that I did. Yeah, the midline fleet, the uh, the midline fleet against the low tech fleet. That mission. Oh, hello. I didn't even get you. Yeah, we can do this. It's a non-issue. I did not mean to deploy that. That's going to be some extra... I mean, it's not going to die here. The enemy fleet's not that strong, but... It's a little bit of extra supplies that I didn't need to spend. Oh well, I guess it'll spice things up a little bit. Alright, your engines are gone, and now you're going to get hit with harpoons. Sucks to suck, I guess. Bro, can you make up your mind? Like, choose one to shoot at. This guy is Tokyo drifting in here. You know, I would expect the Venture to kind of sit back at the back of the fleet and act from long range. Is this in a... Is this like a reckless officer? This He's really getting in there. Or maybe it's because he just really wants to use this, this burst PD. It's like, yeah, that's... That's the primary weapon, really, if you think about it. I mean, it don't miss. It doesn't get much better than that. Might as well. Get them to be a little more forward. Spam all you like. It will not spare you your fate. Bastard. Okay. What do we got? More Gamma Cores. And we got six. Six Raspberry Pies to give to Tritac. That's plus three reputation and plus... Plus money. Plus a lot of money. Okay. Do I still have time to do these? Yeah. We're looking good. Get this up. You know, it's funny, because I rescued that random researcher that they asked me to rescue. And now I'm just carrying him with me. You know, there's no time limit on him returning him, so he's just going on a little adventure. Uh, is anyone... Are we remembering to feed him? Like, do I need to, like, personally go check his quarters? Like, where is he? Because you can't tell me he's in the cargo hold. I mean, I know that's where we put our crew. We put the crew in the cargo hold. But, like, this guy is a, a lot less expendable. And by that, I mean he's worth a lot more money. He's worth 53,000 credits, specifically. You guys, the rest of you, you're not worth that much. You're not that guy. That might be worth jumping in just to see what's there, if I can avoid them. I mean, I do have navigation now, so it should be fairly easy. Uh, you know, what if I go wide? What if I go silly? Instead of going for the first capstone I can reach. What if I do this the silly way? I like that. It's not something I usually do. And while I'm at it, let's get more of these. See, you know what? You know, you do get a little bit of experience from trade. But black market trading can't get you this kind of experience. We're actually leveling up and stuff. A lot of the EXP values in this game are balanced really weirdly. Like finding a beacon... Like sometimes you'll get like 10 XP from something and it's... But like hitting level 2 is 50,000. Right? It's, it's like 10 XP? Really? That's a little silly. Did that say Mothership? It did! It's in this system. Investigated. I I have? I was just ignore like to me distress beacons are like background noise. I don't even pay attention to them. I didn't realize it was this system. Huh. Well, would you look at that? So there's a habitable world over there. What we're looking for in this system is Yeah, we're just gonna drop them off at that planet. This some distance away, of course, yeah. My favorite, this is my favorite kind. That was a lie, it's my least favorite kind. I, I fooled you. 
I've tricked everyone with my, my mastery of deception. I made you think that it was my favorite, when in fact it is the opposite of that. It is my least favorite. All right. Uh, from an orbital... Uh, I kind of don't want to commit to anything. I kind of want to see what would happen if I say that. Wait, can I... How does this go? Oh! It's that easy. I've never done that before. I don't carry around Marines a lot. I know raiding is really effective. I'm just not that interested. Normally I just negotiate with the AI because who cares? You order prearranged shuttle Marines sort of telling what sort of electronic warfare the AI is capable of. Attack mission success. Bug secured. 14 civvies e-bagged. No casualties. Civvies got minor diatmo injuries. One broken arm. Diatmo. Hmm. Alright. The lead researcher is thankful for the rescue, but refuses to explain why an AI Corps was active on their base. Repeated statements of, I take full responsibility, is all you get. Interesting. I don't think I've actually read through most of that dialogue before. Nor have I taken the approach of using Marines before. Hey, look at that. You can get all three. All three at once. Too bad there's no, like, unique items you can put here. Well, I mean, you could put the, the big drill. The big drill that will pierce the planet. Uh, it just won't get you any volatile. It doesn't boost volatiles. Which, the, the drill says that it boosts organics, which for a while I thought was just nonsense, because that's impossible. How could it boost organic production? You can't even... It, it needs to be not a habitable world, and you only get organics from habitable worlds. Well, as it turns out, toxic worlds sometimes, rarely, have organics. And they're not habitable, so you can actually... I was amazed. I was astonished, even, that when I saw that, it was very surprising. All right, let's scan this. There was something next to the sun. It's going to be worth looking at. I still have not seen any hints. Maybe maybe I saw some hints and I just didn't pay attention. But uh, I have no idea where this mothership is. And I would like to find it. Although I don't really need to. Because I already, have, I already know that it's here. I'm really not likely... To win if I just attack it with the omens. I want to come back later. So even if I find it, does that really matter? No. That just means that I'm spending time that I could be using doing the other missions that are time sensitive. Yeah, I guess I'll just let it go. I'll move on. Uh, yep, ruins. That's what I thought. What have we got? A locust. Food. Yum. We're, we're eating good tonight, boys. Hope you like the taste of green. Probably stop by that black hole, too. It's just so I can scan it. I've got a lot of supplies. It'll be fine. Let's see. How's my hyperspace topography coming along? Let's throw that in the important tab. So I've got the first one. I'm working on the second one. Just bob and weave. Bob and weave our way through the storms. Yeah, I think I'll stop by. There's there's no there's there's nothing. There's nothing orbiting this black hole. There's a gate. Oh, that's why there's nothing orbiting it. It's a dual system. Let's see if there's anything orbiting the gate. There is not. But just knowing that it's here is kinda kinda useful. Obligation it's up to seven thousand now. Which is doubling my expenditure compared to what it would normally be. Although it's... Oh! What? 
Oh, this is a trinary system. And apparently... You know, I never tried to see how far I could get from a neutron star before. I did not know that they had a range limit. This is news to me. I'm going to be doing a lot of scanning. My, my topographers are going to be eating good tonight. They're getting a lot of data. You bastards better be grateful, because this is going to be expensive. Pop that, and let's get out of here. Yep, 30% on the fleet. Lovely. Now loop around, and we'll scan that that dang beam. How long we got on the other ones? 43 days, 25 on this one. Terran world. Yeah, we'll have to be quick. Oh, we've got to scan the magnetic field too while we're at it. Nope, that did nothing. So I guess it's only magnetic fields on planets. So we scan that. Then we hit the beam, which is going to be a pain. I'm just going to... Oh, we, we actually stop in place. I did not know that. The way that momentum worked was kind of weird. Hmm. All right. So we're looking for a Terran world. So we want to do that one first. Of course, it's orbiting the gas giant. I was considering dropping in on the gas giant, and I thought, nah, it's probably one of the other planets. So naturally, I was wrong. All right, I'll come back to that after exploring the rest of it, because I'm more interested in the rest of the stuff. So it doesn't have any common ores. Plus one organics, plus one farmland. It's got no hazards. It's also got no gate, but I hear that you can build a gate in one system of your choice, so it might be worth considering where I'm going to do that. Five supplies ain't nothing. We can do that. Let me get that scan. All right, we're going to move up. Oh, did I already get that magnetic field when I... Hmm. I might have been in range on the first pulse. Plus 20 topography, very cool. Okay. I think somebody died on that one. I was just just kind of scanned the uh really that much defenses. I mean they I know they get stronger and stronger over time. It's just really You know what? I don't think I have the time to go around and come back. Yeah, if I go around and try to come back later, I think there's going to be a problem getting to the next the next uh, point of interest. So I'm just going to do this battle now. Even though the enemy outnumbers us, uh, this should be a non-issue. It just might take a while. But you should never underestimate omens. And antimatter blasters are also good. So that's cleaned up. Yeah, what are you going to do? You're going to burn drive, you're going to get your engines disabled, and then you're going to cry about it. Yeah, I'm going to need you to kill the small ones. Let's do that. Just make sure you don't get too reckless. Yeah, this guy with the, the tactical laser is making it worse. Refits in space are going to cost me supplies, but it's not going to cost that much. I, I, should, I should do that. Look at that. Exciting, isn't it? It's one down. Let's see number two. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, I see the issue here. Yeah. And, uh... Like, sometimes the one with the LRPD accidentally, like, hovers into range to use its arc emitter. This guy? Useless. You have to change both of those. I should have just used, like, regular PD or something. Come on. This is less of a combat and more of a disco. Yeah, blow him up. Come on. Bye bye. I guess while we're waiting, I can tell you the other fun astronomy fact I have, which is that, similar to how most stars in the real world, are red dwarfs, 80% of them. And that the game is not realistic in that regard, and that's okay. Another interesting thing is that most stars are in binary or trinary pairs. Well, if it's trinary, it's not a pair, but you know what I mean. The idea of like a solo star, like our sun, is actually the minority. That's actually unusual. It's not crazy unusual. It's not like it's not like a huge margin, but but it's definitely not the the standard. So that's another little thing that it's a you might not expect. You would assume, like, you know, we've got yeah. See this one, I took out the little one, and then they added more defenses here. <clears throat> and, and I don't want to deal with that, so we're not going to. But yeah, that's another little thing. Like you would assume that most stars are. You know, sim like, our sun is medium-sized, so you'd assume, like, oh, medium-sized means that that's probably, like, the standard, the average. And that, uh, you know, being a single solo star makes sense as being the standard. But neither are actually standard. It's actually unusual in both cases. You know, I'm carrying around this food and I'm dumping these metals. What am I doing? Get rid of the metal. Get rid of the food. Nobody wants it. Nobody cares about it. You know, and if you think that's rude to the food, the food can cry itself to sleep for all I care. Nobody's eating it. Just take all of that. A lot of church. It's... Uh, I don't even know why that's a package. It's three things. Alright. Alright, are we gonna have time? Yeah, 25 days. We're fine. Oh, there's something next to the sun, too. And no fleets to annoy me. Perfect. So we're going to have a look at what's here. Then we're going to go back home. Uh, hopefully bribe our way into Tritachion. I mean, get into Tritachion through very legitimate practices. As you would expect, of course. <clears throat> and then get some more ships and come back and take that mothership. That's, that's probably where I'm going to start the next episode. Or the next video. I don't know if it's, this isn't a TV show. Why would I call it an episode? Okay. Yeah, you know, I don't really need hull restoration that badly. Right now. I don't need to make a beeline for it, really. I'll just grab Wolfpack Tactics. It's going to serve me well, considering my fleet composition. And then I'll grab crew training. And then maybe I'll grab some combat skills to get my character up to snuff. Yeah, that sounds like a plan. I like that idea. Oh, and of course, let's not forget this. Mining laser, that's my alternative. I mean, the damage doesn't really matter, and it is shorter range. So yeah, mining laser. Let's go. Oh, cool, it's right where I'm going. It should be... So, I believe what it says in the lore is that the standard is to be... for uh, When you put out a distress signal, the standard is to be in the closest jump point to the heart of the system. Uh, now, the fact that there's a hostile fleet there makes me think 
that that is not a good place that I want to be, actually. All right, let's look. How many do I get? Just the two. So I should be able to scan these as well. And I saw something up off to the left. Uh, hold on. Yeah, don't care about this. Where is this? Jump point. Right. Okay. There's three jump points. I gotta be fast, and then I can come back and do these things. And then I can even scan the center of the system. Okay. Yup, there they are. I'm not seeing any... Yeah, I'm not seeing anything at the center there. It's gonna be one of the other jump points. 11 days. We're short on time. And I found the sentinels. Or the, you know, the thing. I was really surprised when I found it the first time. And actually, I've only found it once. I only found it once before. Oh, uh, yeah, that explains why. Yep. That explains why that would be here. It's because uh, this particular system has these things orbiting these jump points. I mean, I could just leave these and come back later if I do automated ships, but I'm not going to do automated ships. So I'm just going to scrap them. Oh, I found the location of a derelict ship. That's so cool. Where is it? In this very system? And it's at least... Cr That's insane. That's crazy. Uh, it wouldn't happen to be around the other jump point, would it? That would just be wild. I mean, I, would, I never would have figured that out. There... What?! This is a Radiant. There was a guy in there. This guy has to have the craziest damn story. Like, there must have been a big battle, and he just got, like, ejected through an airlock during combat, but he was wearing his suit, and he, and he took refuge inside. That guy's got a story. Somebody, write a, somebody should write a fanfic about that. I mean, there's even a dedicated uh, fanfic section on the forum. Like, that... I mean, that's probably just a bug, really, but... Yeah, that's that's crazy. Okay, let's uh, explore those. Cool. Oh, so there is nothing around this jump point. Okay. It's probably wherever the, the, the cache is. Oh, you know what? I I should come back with a hegemony. I was thinking about going Tritachion, and I said I was going to do that, but I've got my omens. And the thing is, if I have a hegemony commission, then I can get past the guardians and get to the cache. And that's probably what that is over there. This is pretty good, actually. You can do my. You can do fuel refining. You can do metal refining. You can do military. It's got plus accessibility, and then you could do some mining for those. All right. See so yeah, how over here in this asteroid field. This is going to be it. Yeah. Hidden cache. Behold, if you've not seen these before, your eyes don't deceive you. That is a bunch of AI cores running heavily S-modded ships of the 14th Legion. And they're guarding something real special. I'll have to come back for that later. Oh, this is just a regular enforcer. Yeah, I'm not gonna... I'm not even gonna pretend that I want that. I could recover this. As a flagship? Well, suddenly, I need hull restoration, don't I? Dang. I'm going to think about this for a minute. Oh, well, it depends on what it is. What have you got? Let's hit F1. Maintenance, sensor rate, armor kind of sucks. Paying extra fuel kind of sucks. But it's combat isn't hurt too badly, and it doesn't slow the fleet down. It's the same speed as the Venture on the strategic level. It's just going to cost extra fuel and supplies. 
But I really don't want to pay extra fuel and supplies. I think I'm just going to salvage this. It's going to be... Because trying to repair it at the dock is not an option. That, that's just not financially viable. And I don't have... I'm not even close to hull restoration, so that's just not happening. I could have been close. I'm at level 4, so I could be, like, right next to it. In that case, I might have done it, but... In this case, nah. I'll dump all of those. Another commander. I guess that kind of makes sense, considering the context. Alright, let's go talk to these guys. Yeah. I, actually, I, you. You should be scared of me. Get out of here, kid. I'll give you one chance. Oh, leave me alone. I'll hide in the nebula. Yeah. Oh, they both just gonna sensor burst? You're gonna do me like that, are you? It's just rude, honestly. It's disrespectful. I, I, I'm, I'm appalled that you would do such a thing. You should be ashamed of yourself doing a sensor burst like that. I mean, I, do you not understand that people can see you right now? This is ridiculous. People have no honor these days, really. Okay. I was thinking about doing something and now I don't remember what. Yeah, I'll just take that. Actually, I should... I should just be leaving a lot of this crap here. I can come pick it up later when I get a colony. Yeah, that's good. And then, of course, you've got... Is this a regular non-14 enforcer? Yucky. I'll take the stuff off of it, though. And then I'll probably... Yeah, I guess I'll just do this. Wait, no, this is... No, yeah, it is 14. Okay, what am I saying? This is a 14th. Still not great. Still probably not going to use it. This might get used. I mean, not in the condition that it's in, but... Yeah, I think I'll just leave these here. Yeah, and you can refit here. Yep, yep, yep. And... Hail the signal. We might have to make contact the old-fashioned way. The first AI war, or this... This has to be a reference to those time traveler memes. I don't know if you've seen the ones where it's like, a time traveler goes to the past and asks, Hey, is this... Uh, you guys seem to be fighting a war. Is this the first world war or the second? In like nineteen, in like nineteen seventeen, and they're like, "I'm sorry, what? The, the there's a second. This this has to be a reference to that meme because taking in the implication, yeah, this, this is this is that basically. Or it's like, I'm, I'm sorry, there was a second AI war. Oh, continue, continue, catch her up, continue." Ask some questions. Uh, yep, yep. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna keep clicking one actually, because uh, I've read this before. You can pause to read any of that if you're interested. Yep, and that's it. So this colony can be re. I think I have to get a. I think you do have to get a hegemony. No, you don't need a commission. You just need to talk to the hegemony, and then this colony will become a colony, which is kind of useful. You know, they, they don't have a lot, but they give you a little bit of refueling out in the middle of nowhere. Okay, so I'm going to go scan the center of the system. I'm going to ignore this jump point because it's infested with pirates. And really, nobody wants to deal with that. I th so I've tried scanning binary before. You do get something for scanning the center of a binary system. I might have missed that. Because I, I remember trying to scan a binary system once and getting nothing. So I thought that it was only trinary systems for a while. 
But no, that's not how that works. It includes binary. I might have missed that already. Actually, yeah, I was here and I for I did I did scan this and I did scan this and I forgot to get like the center point wherever that is. I did forget to do that. Maybe if they're that far apart, maybe it's maybe that was why it didn't scan. Maybe it's because if they're too far apart, it doesn't count. That might have been it. All right, so we're going to get back. And then you're going to have to say goodbye. I know. It's been a long time. You've, you're just waiting for an endless deluge of content like seems to be available these days. Uh, but I've got other things to do. I'm just kidding. I don't have much else to do. But I can't do this forever. I'm going to take a break. And this is going to be... I don't think how long it is at this point. Three hours? Probably more than that. This is going to be long. Alright, what's our child support looking like? 10k. 10k. At this point, it's probably not child support. It's got to be a scam. Probably fell for a crypto scam. And now we're just deep in the... Deep in the hole. That's what it's got to be. I mean, Paul Bingus is the kind of guy who would fall for a crypto scam. That's for sure. I mean, have you seen him? No, you haven't, because he's wearing a helmet. Look. And you can't trust a guy if you've never... If he won't show you his face. So, you know, he really is... I mean, that, like, he's just got all the signs, really. Although, to be fair, in the future, crypto's probably more reliable. I mean, what, what do you think credits are? It's space Bitcoin. We all know this. You know it. I know it. We've all heard it before. That's what it is. Okay. Yeah, both of these are in the same direction. I'll grab them. And we'll visit, we'll pay Galatia a visit. And then it's Sayonara. Don't scare me like that, Jesus. Alright, grab that. That's in the wrong direction. Yeah, the Pathers can't harass me now. I've got omens. Actually, you know what? I probably should have just stopped recording during the boring part of just going back. I'll consider that in the future. Alright. Instrument pack. That's in the... I swear. I swear. I just accepted the two missions in the other direction. You, you're doing this on purpose, aren't you? Okay, hold on. I can salvage this. How close is that? It's honestly not that close. You know what? I don't care. I'm not going to care. Uh, so anyways, uh, yeah, that's about it. See ya.